So, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're all still awake. I promise you won't be at the end. Uh, so, as has already been said, uh, I'm here to talk today about homelessness and then specifically about the work of the Famvin Homeless Alliance. And I'm assisted by the very glamorous Sister Carol here, who has, has more degrees than you, can, than you can throw a stick at, really, I think. Um, as has been said, I'm wearing three hats. So I'm the group CEO of DePaul International, of which more later. Uh, I'm the founder of the Institute of Global Homelessness, based in Chicago, of which more later. Uh, and the coordinator of the FAMVIN Homeless Alliance. But I wanted to start looking at this slide, uh, whether we have any bird watchers in the room. Anybody here, put your hand up. It's, you don't have to be scared. Anybody who's gone out and watched birds, put your hand up if you have. Oh, we've got, we've got several. We've got several bird watchers in the room. The reason, the reason I ask you this is that, and you might not know this, is that every year in over 100 countries around the world, at exactly the same time, so in February, people in 100 countries are invited to go out into their back gardens and to count the numbers of birds that are there and the species that are there. It's called the Great Backyard Bird Count. And all the bird watchers are nodding. We did this. Uh, and the reason we, we do this is that at the end, all of this data from out, around the world is collated into one, into one bank of knowledge. And from that, we can tell whether bird numbers are growing or whether they're falling. In the case of migrating birds, we can tell if numbers are falling, whether that's being caused perhaps by a natural disaster or by a man-made intervention. And we can take action to make sure that we preserve that species, that those birds uh, continue to survive. And the reason I tell you this is that, isn't it strange that we probably know more about how many birds there are in the world than we know about how many homeless people there are in the world. Only less than 30 countries count homeless people around the world. So we know more about birds, is the first point that I want to make. How did the Famvin Homeless Alliance come about? Well, in 2017, the Vincentian family celebrated the 400th anniversary of the Vincentian charism. And to mark this, it chose, it chose to ask, to, to look at the global Vincentian family and reflect on the passage from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew, Matthew 25, which challenges to welcome the stranger. Welcome the stranger. And this theme was chosen in order to encourage us to respond to a world in which millions of people are fleeing their homes, becoming strangers in their own or in foreign countries, a world in which millions of people are living on the streets or trapped in slums, trapped in favelas, often at the margins of society, at the margins of society. Ignored, excluded from what they need to live a fulfilling and a happy life. Within the Vincentian family, there was a strong desire to put these homeless strangers at the core of our anniversary celebrations and to launch a collaborative initiative, the FAMVIN Homeless Alliance. And this was going to have a practical focus on reducing where possible, even ending the exclusion attached to homelessness in all of the countries, all 151 countries in which the Vincentian family works. And after reflection and consultation, it was agreed by the global leadership of the Vincentian family that they would ask Hall International to manage this initiative on behalf 
of the Vincentian family. Some of you might be familiar with DePaul. Let me give you a very short introduction. This is DePaul International, established in 1990. I've been part of this since the very beginning. Part of this in 1990. It's beginning. why I have no hair. 1990. It's why I have no hair. Uh, we, have we've no now hair. grown and uh, we work with 20,000 homeless people in seven countries, in seven countries and we have several other countries in development. When we talk about collaboration, we should remember that uh, DePaul itself in 1990 was begun as a collaboration of the Vincentian family. It was the Daughters of Charity, the Society of St. Vincent de Paul, and the Passage Day Centre that created us as a charity. That's how we are as a family. And wherever you go in the world, for any of our subsidiaries that are up here, you'll find Vincentians directly involved in governance and management and volunteering within what we do. So Vincentian values are at the heart of our mission and spirituality. As DePaul grew, we had requests for help to establish homeless services in many other countries, especially those in which the Vincentian family works, uh, in Africa, in Asia, in Latin America. But we didn't have the resources to respond to all of these requests that were coming in. And with this in mind, I agreed with Father Dennis Holschneider, the president of DePaul University, to establish something called the Institute of Global Homelessness, of global which is based at DePaul University global itself. At DePaul University and itself. amongst other things, uh, this and institute things. provides training for emerging leaders from around the world. All of you are welcome to to apply or send representatives um, for that training program. We have an online research and best practice hub that anybody can access for free that will tell you the best practices in homelessness. And we're currently working with 150 cities across the world to reduce and end homelessness in order to prove that it can be done with the right will uh, to do this. In addition to that, we're supporting the work of the Famvin Homeless Alliance at the United Nations, and I'll say a little of that later. But when we created the IGH, its first task was actually to try and define what do you mean by global homelessness? What does it actually mean? And in coming with this, we agreed a definition, and this is the definition that we came up with. It's not short, but homeless is a complex problem. And this is available on the IGH website, translated in all the languages that are in this room. So if you visit the IGH website, you can find this definition there. Essentially, it boils down that homelessness boils is in down three down categories. Is in three categories. The first category is people without accommodation, so those living on the streets of our towns and our cities. The second, second category of homelessness is those living in temporary or crisis accommodation, refugees living in camps. Uh, in victims of natural disasters living in temporary shelters. And the third category are people living in slums and favelas. So using this base definition, these three areas, what is it that the Fanvin Homeless Alliance is trying to do? Well, our target group is in three areas. Well, the first areas. is some is dwellers. The first there are dwellers. over 863 million men, women and children living in slums children. and favelas across the world. In 1950, in only 746 in million people lived in our cities. Lived in our that cities. grew to 3.9 billion to 3 in 2014. And it, billion billion and it will reach 6.4 billion by 2050. So this is continuing as, as a rise uh, in numbers of people in slums as urbanization gathers pace across the globe. The second category is refugees. 
there are over 70 million refugees, internally displaced people and stateless people globally at the moment. And this is the highest level ever recorded. If you want to get a sense of it, it's the entire population of the United Kingdom are refugees at the moment around the world. That is the size and scale of the issue. And then thirdly, the rising number of street homeless across the world who have fallen through the safety the net and need help the to rejoin their community. And need help the, to rejoin their community. the best estimate we have was given in 23, 20 or three by the United Nations. And it is a guess because as I said at the beginning, Nobody measures this at all. But the guess that they made is there are between 100 and 150 million people living on the streets of our cities uh, around the world. In addition to this, these groups, the Family and Homeless Alliance recognises there are cross-cutting themes, and I know that some of you will be working on these. Those of you who are working in the areas of people trafficking, modern-day slavery, uh, as well as other agendas related to poverty uh, and, and poor policy making systemic change that might as, allow us to prevent homelessness. What causes homelessness? Here's a very common image Here's a very common to describe image. homelessness. To describe put your hand on this in this room put your hand on this if you've ever room. had to deal with an overflowing bathtub yeah? A overflowing bathtub. It's foot with water and the water is coming through the ceiling. Yeah? A lot of us have, have been there. When you, when you walk into the room and this overflowing bathtub is there, what's the first thing you would do? The first thing you would do is to turn off the tap. Yeah? The second thing you would do is to pull out the plug. And the third thing you would do is to mop up the water. Imagine this is homelessness, right? And the taps, the faucet, is where people are arriving into homelessness. People are becoming homeless. Imagine that the bathtub is the system of homelessness. So it's the shelters, the day centers, it's the refugee camps, it's the shelters. And then imagine that the water on the floor behind you is, uh, is the homeless people we see on our streets. Here's what we do when we deal with homelessness. We go in and we mop up the people who are on the streets. We never think to turn off the tap. We never think to pull out the plug and change the system. If you want to end homelessness, you have to do all three. You have to prevent homelessness happening, turn off the tap. You have to pull out the plug and deal with it. And you have to mop up the people that are there. And that means an investment in systemic change. And it means an investment in specialist services that can deal with the people who have real crisis on our streets, as was shown by some of the films that we saw earlier. And the FA chair, the Family and Homeless Alliance, I hope is inspiring people to do all three things. So how do we do it? Well, we started with conferences and training events, bringing the Vincentian family together. Our Vincentian first family together. conference was Our here in Rome in November 2018. In November 2018. Uh, and we've got others planned for the future. And the next one will actually be in November of this year in, in Spain. And we're having a special, Spain, having a special focus on refugees. So if any of you are working with refugees and you're interested in part of that conference, please let one of our staff members know at the end and we'll make sure that we get you on the invite list. In 2021, we'll focus on slum dwellers. Our conference will be on slum dwellers. But let's look at some concrete of what we're doing in trying to influence systemic change. So I'm going to talk about the United Nations, our work there. I'm going to talk about our work in Catholic social teaching. And then I'm going to hand over to Sister Carol to talk about the main event, which is the 13 Houses campaign. 
This photo shows uh, Father Guillermo Camposano, or, or, or as we call him, Memo, for those of you who know him uh, around the world. Those of you who and know he him, is the uh, uh, part and of the Vincentian group who are working uh, at the UN at the, at the moment. And he's there with members of the AIC, and he's there with members uh, who are part of that group as well, uh, along with the SVP and, and many others, the Daughters of Charity and many others. And he managed, in some way, the group, the, the, uh, the group at the UN, the Vincentians, managed to get me a place to speak at an assembly, the Social Development Forum of the UN, in 2018. And this was the first time that homelessness had ever been discussed at any level, street homelessness, at the UN in a debate. And the Vincentians were the ones who brokered that opportunity uh, for us to speak. And it was extraordinary to me that given the fact that we have the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, that nobody had ever talked about homelessness as part of this agenda for poverty uh, within the UN. If you look at the Sustainable Development Goals, as I said, there are 17 of them. You could argue that all of them are directly relevant to homelessness. Let me just choose a couple of examples. Choose SDG examples. 1 Choose. says SDG we will eradicate poverty in all of its forms. Well, how, you know, admittedly, how poverty is relative, you know, how but surely is relative, if we're eradicating how poverty, how poverty is relative, then it should mean an end to anybody sleeping on our streets. Surely that is the most visible poverty that we can see. Secondly, SDG 3. Ensuring healthy lives and promoting well-being for everybody at all ages. I would argue that housing is a social determinant of health. And there's overwhelming evidence that homelessness is associated with ill health and dramatically lower than average life expectancy. If you are homeless, you will die 30 years earlier than anybody else if you are a homeless person. Reducing inequalities is SDG 10. And yet homeless people are one of the most discriminated groups in society, if you want to take the basis of colour, gender or income. And then finally, SDG 11, making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. And we, we say that this will include providing safe, adequate housing for all, and yet there is no measurement of this at all within the SDGs. It's an empty phrase. It means nothing at all in terms of housing that people will get. I should tell you that this, this graph, which talks about homelessness being part of all the SDGs, was actually, again, developed by the Vincentian family within the UN. So what have we managed to achieve? Well. In three weeks' time, in February of, of, of this coming year, uh, of this year, homelessness, as a result of the efforts of the Vincentian family, will be the priority theme of the Social Development Forum. It will be the, the priority theme at this session. And the title is Affordable Housing and Social Protection for All to Address Homelessness. The first time in UN history that homelessness has been discussed as a unique topic. And we're hoping from this to make it mandatory that every country in the world will have to measure homelessness from now on. Every country will have it as part of their report to the United Nations. And in fact, last week, the Secretary General of the UN produced his first report on homelessness, which was issued to all of the people attending this forum. If we can get a measurement of homelessness, then we believe that the Vincentian family will have led on an initiative that by 2030 we can make a reduction or even ending homelessness a sustainable development goal in 2030 onwards. So it's a fantastic job that all of your 
uh, your representatives at the UN, your representatives of the last UN, your representatives well of the last UN, your representatives well of the last UN. Last for me, and then I'll hand over. Last for me, and then I'll hand over. Last is that in 2017, the Farm Vin Homes Alliance and the Vincentian family in partners that has held a symposium again here in Rome, bringing together theologians, practitioners, and policy makers to reflect on homelessness and Catholic social teaching. And as a result, homelessness and Catholic social teaching. And as a result, homelessness and Catholic social teaching. And as a result, homelessness and Catholic social teaching. And as a result, homelessness and Catholic social teaching. first new materials in this area since the 1980s. And we have plans to develop this further into a conference with a dicastery of integral human development at the Vatican to feed this teaching into the church debate globally. And we're grateful for the Systemic Change Commission of the Vincent family for the work they've done in helping us disseminate this. If you want to buy a copy of this, this book, you can talk to me afterwards. I think it's priced, personally, at $45 <laughs> uh, a book but we can get you a discount of 60% for anybody who's interested uh, in, 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 in getting your copy. And you'll recognize some of the names in this. There are, there are eight Vincentians who've submitted essays uh, in, this, in this volume on Catholic social teaching. So that's my bit. Over to Sister Carol to talk about the practical thing of the 13 houses. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> And uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. Because Sister Kathleen Adler, the Superioress General of the Sisters of, of the Daughters of Charity, asked me a couple years ago to join the board of the uh, Fan Vin Homeless Alliance, I <clears throat> am here sort of propping up Mark here. Um, <laughs> But it is, a, it is a great pleasure for me to be part of this program and this important initiative for the most vulnerable among us. <clears throat> As Mark told you, we had a very ambitious aim of ending homelessness as our task for the 400th anniversary. anniversary. For the, as the anniversary. FHA. For the start of the started and how reflect. this could be achieved in a practical way, which is in keeping with our charism. We only had to look at the Luke infancy narratives to be reminded that even back then, Mary and Joseph were turned away in their greatest time of need. There was no room for them at the inn. It reminds us every year at Christmas of the 1.2 billion people in this world that find themselves in similar situations. People who are continuously turned away from borders, from communities, from safe shelter, people who are in desperate need of help. But how to start and where to start we turned to St. Vincent, hoping for guidance on how we could possibly succeed in this mammoth task, and he did not disappoint. We found inspiration in the works that St. Vincent de Paul himself commissioned for the homeless, and we all owe a great debt of thanks to Bob Maloney for his research in this area. It is available online and in translation on the FHA and in translation website. On the FHA and I urge you website. to take a look at it. And I urge you to take a look at it. The 13 Houses, the 13 Houses was an idea ahead of its time. An idea ahead of its time. When Louis the 13th died in 1643, the equivalent million dollars was left as a legacy to Vincent for his work. He decided to use the money to build what were known then as the 13 houses, to provide a place of sanctuary for abandoned children. It was a collaboration between the Congregation of the Mission 
the AIC, and the Daughters of Charity, who provided the care and support for thousands of children who would have otherwise died. It is interesting to note that at this time, collaboration with other members of the Vincentian family was his default position to get things done. At the same time, the Vincentian family were feeding upwards of 10,000 homeless and excluded people twice a day at St. Lazar and other locations. <clears throat> In addition, Vincent welcomed many thousands of refugees fleeing the wars in the Alsace-Lorraine. As Father Bob mentioned yesterday, Brother Reynard made 58 visits, handing out over $68 million worth of aid, as well as bringing back young refugees to be resettled in France. In collaboration with the early Vincentian family, <coughs> excuse me, he created the name of Jesus Hospice, which housed and taught employment skills to 40 homeless young men and women living in the slums of Paris. In collaboration, he also developed Le Petit École, the little schools, which provided literacy and life skills to the homeless in order to stop intergenerational poverty and prevent homelessness just in case we thought we had come up with this idea first. <clears throat> By bringing the 13 houses to life, we hope to bring a home to at least 10,000 people around the globe and to deliver at least one project in all 151 countries in which the Vincentian family works. There are no prescriptions as to what the 13 houses should look like in your country, as long as they address an urgent need and have a long-term systemic change perspective. Systemic change it might be actual houses. Systemic change it might be, it might be a day houses. center. It might be a day seating station. It might be about education. It might be about education. It might be about education. To achieve this, we are looking at global solidarity and local collaboration as we believe that people on the ground are best placed to agree on the way forward. They're listening to those experiencing homelessness and their understanding of the local environment is invaluable in creating a project that ultimately helps those that are in most desperate need in their area. We encourage all members of the Vincentian family to come together to build their own version of the 13 houses. And whilst we hope for 13 physical houses in each country, we do understand that realities might differ greatly from community, branch, country, to another, and, and others due to different circumstances. For example, different uh, resources that are available, the proximity between towns where Vincentian family members are, and a number of other factors. The 13 houses should therefore be seen sort of as an allegory for providing the very things that literally stood for, that they literally stood for in Vincent's time, safety, community, warmth, hope, and a future. How to get involved. There are many different ways in which you can get involved in the 13 Houses campaign. And any help you can give is greatly appreciated. It is a global call to action 
which will only be heard once the entire Vincentian family gets involved. The, 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 the first option is to build 13 houses. Is to build the wild house. House. that might sound the wild very ambitious. Might sound the wild Remember that it doesn't matter how big or small. Your idea of 13 houses your idea of 13 houses your idea One small observation about a need might grow into an initiative that helps numerous refugees or internally displaced people, slum dwellers or street homeless people. For instance, in Peru, the Vincentian family, working together, has <clears throat> set up uh, an organization that is building a village and that will include 13 houses in that village for um, refugees coming from Venezuela and other homeless families. The Homeless Alliance Board met in, in November in Madrid, and we had the joy of watching the work of the Vincentian family in that area for the homeless. And we visited some of the places such as a daycare center for hundreds of homeless every day getting food, clothing, bathing facilities, relaxation centers. When you think about the homeless, where can they go to just relax? The use of a computer to try to get jobs and apply for jobs, social services, and very uh, many other impressive services, even including things like podiatry. We also visited another uh, one of their works in a very uh, impressive section of Madrid where the Vincentian, where the Daughters of Charity and their collaborators have taken an apartment house and turned it into individual homes for refugees, trafficked women, single mothers and their children, people just released from prison. And on top of that, the sisters live with them in order to accompany them to changing their lives. Uh, these are only a few, but the Fam Vin Homeless Alliance provides a platform and can support not only branches, but individuals along the way with a wide range of project development tools and experts who are keen to share their insights and other technical expertise. All of these resources are online and we have a helpline available. You can get in touch via the website or their social media channels to share stories, projects, pictures, to ask questions and get help. Telling the FAMBIN Homeless Alliance about projects you intend to develop or you already run will allow us to showcase the work and keep track of how many 13 houses projects are developed over the next few years. The next option is to support the Solidarity Fund, which has been set up to support poorer branches or communities to receive vital funds needed for them to realize their own 13 houses projects. Already, several countries have reached out and offer support, offered support to realize projects in other countries as well as in their own. The Solidarity Fund is held and distributed by the Congregation of the Mission International Fund. The entire grant process is administered through them. You also could volunteer your expertise throughout the campaign with your in-depth knowledge in a specific field. It could be exactly what is needed on the ground and could help bring a 13 houses project to the next level. 
And yet another option that Mark talked a bit about is to become an advocate for change by helping to raise awareness of the scale of global homelessness by sharing articles on social media platforms and by encouraging people to become members of the FAMVIN Homeless Alliance. Your involvement in any way, shape or form will help us to reach many people, to hear more ideas, to develop more projects, and finally house more street homeless people, refugees, internally displaced people, and slum dwellers across the globe. The Vincentian family is ingenious in its work, compassionate in its approach, and a force of change across the world. And through partnerships and collaborations, we can, we can end homelessness one house at a time. I want to show you a map now of our progress. Mark talked a little bit about it, and it's, it's an important uh, thing to look at as we continue to measure. And when we are critical of, of and when we the UN for not measuring in countries for not measuring, it's important that we stand up for not measuring. It's important that we stand up for not measuring. It's important that we stand up for not measuring. It's important that we stand up for not measuring. Thank you. Was he waving at me before? Thank you. I'm going to try to act like I'm on Prozac. Which is not my drug of choice. <laughs> I apologize to the translators. I set you crazy. This map before you represents this map before you represents countries. Countries. map before you where a thirteen houses project where a thirteen has already started. has already started. To give you an idea of what Vincentians have to give you an idea of what Vincentians have to give you an idea of what has launched. To let me share long numbers. 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 We are at an early stage of gathering information. We are gathering information. However, in October. However, 2019, the FAM about 30 houses projects at some stage of development happening in 28 countries. And the campaign has reached all continents, Africa, Asia, the Americas, Europe, the Mediterranean, and the Pacific Islands, as you can see from the map. As of October 2019, we were counting over 500 houses or shelters being built in these countries. These 37 projects are providing housing to an estimated 3,260 people, which is a promising start. Promising as start. we keep in sight our objectives, as we keep in sight our objectives, as we keep in sight our objectives, and the number of 3,260 homes is an estimate. For some projects, for some projects, understanding of how many people, of how many people we are housing. For example, projects which are about providing a house for victims of natural catastrophes, such as in Mexico or Guatemala. Also for those actions concerning refurbishing and improvement of homes in conflict zones, like Palestine, or in slum dwellers, like in Madagascar, or projects providing housing for people at risk of homelessness, such as poor university students in the United States. In other projects, we have estimates and projections. 
taking into account project capacity and past experience as they deal with the shifting flow of beneficiaries. This happens in projects concerning temporary shelters, such as in Ukraine, or refugee camps, such as in Peru or Rwanda, or in victims of trafficking in places like Spain. In our effort to mobilize the Vincentian family, in terms of resource mobilization, the response is varied and really depends varied and on really the local capacity to raise really funds. Some, funds. Local some, funds. Have, funds. More funds. some funds. have more experience, some have more experience, or some others are happening in their or have more happening happening in their communities and can mobilize and raise the funds themselves and raise the funds. So, out of the 37 projects, out of the 37, 15 have been able to raise the funds they need. The information available, the information available at the moment shows over uh, 15 million dollars of local mobilization. But for some projects, we are still collecting the exact amount. We are still collecting the to support those projects, which need more help. The FamVin Homeless Alliance created a solidarity fund. We have received some funds from Vincentian family branches, a few foundations, and some goodwilled individuals. With this contribution, the FHA has been able to fund five of the 37 13 houses projects. Like those, we have projects ready to be implemented, just waiting for the Solidarity Fund to provide the funds necessary. We currently need about $600,000 for those projects we have identified. It is important to mention that each project FHA receives goes through an assessment process to ensure compliance with the objectives of the Alliance. The Solidarity Fund does not provide 100% of the funding needed. Local contribution is essential and encouraged, and there is a commitment from applicants to provide part of the funding. As we move on with the campaign, we are hoping to have projects we in are new hoping countries. To have projects as our aim is to have projects as our aim is to have one project 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 as our aim is
bueno, estudiando ese asunto con los que en aquel momento compartían su misma actividad, decidieron construir 13 casas y al mismo tiempo que se dio una oportunidad de mejor atención a los niños expositos. Fue un proyecto muy grande, por eso también San Vicente de, de, de Paúl es reconocido eh, en muchos lados con niños, porque ahí se dedicó desde 1638 a 1644 a eh, eh, atender a los niños expósitos, los niños que nadie quería. La Thirteen Houses campaign es parte de una much bigger initiative called the Famvin Bonds Alliance, which brings together all parts of the Vincentian family around the globe to celebrate the 400 years of the Vincentian charism. Our aim over the next three to five years is to house uh, 10,000 people in the 151 countries in which the Vincent de Paul family works. Una de las experiencias que más me han emocionado como voluntaria vicentina ha sido el trabajo y el contacto que hemos tenido con las personas de Guayapan, las personas de aquí, porque hemos vivido con ellas en su drama de haber perdido sus viviendas a causa de un terremoto que hubo en el 2017. El, el 19 de septiembre yo estaba en, en el mercado. Mi, mi niño acaba de salir del preescolar y fuimos, este, fue un martes, yo recuerdo, fue un martes, fuimos a, a comprar la, la despensa. Entonces estábamos en el mercado, un poco afuera del mercado y empezamos, eh, que empezó a, a temblar. Y nos quedamos ahí, o por seguridad nos quedamos ahí. Entonces en, la, adentro del mercado se empezó a caer la, el escombro. Este, nosotros nos encontrábamos en la iglesia de aquí del pueblo de Guayapan, era a la una de la tarde, cuando inició la misa, ya después sintió pues el, el movimiento y pues todas las personas salieron, yo estaba yo afuera, afuera dentro del atrio y las personas salieron y ya este, pues sentimos el movimiento y ya pues todos este, así con, con el miedo pues estaba temblando. El día del temblor estaba yo aquí en Guayapan, este, con mi mamá, con mis sobrinos, y sentí horrible porque todo se empezó a mover. Muchísimo miedo porque sentía que se nos venía la casa encima. Y con todos mis sobrinos aquí alrededor estaban chiquitos. Sí, sentí horrible. Sentí que ya no sobrevivíamos de recordar me da mucha emoción porque después de tantos años que teníamos nuestro jacalito se puede decir pues ahora prácticamente tenemos un palacio entonces pues se imagina la emoción tan grande de nuestro jacalito cuando tembló pues se cuartió las 13 casas han impactado a la comunidad de Hueyapan de manera muy positiva. Esta comunidad que en, durante el sismo del 2017 quedaron el 80% de las viviendas destruidas, incluyendo su, su parroquia, incluyendo su casa de gobierno y demás, es, se han dado cuenta de que las personas, hay personas de muy buena voluntad que se preocupan por ellas y que han estado acompañándolos en todo este proceso de, pues de duelo, de pérdida y, y que hemos podido pues devolverles la esperanza. Trece casas y familias vicentinas, muchas gracias por darle un hogar a mis hijos. Bueno, pues que, este, quiero darle este, las gracias ahora sí de todo corazón y, y que Diosito este, lo siga bendiciendo a, este, a las trece casas de la familia vicentina por apoyarnos este, pues con nuestra casita. Gracias a ellos, pues ahorita ya vamos a descansar, ahora sí que, pues tranquilos dentro del, del techo, que Dios los siga bendiciendo, que les dé mucha salud y este, pues que sigan adelante apoyando, porque yo creo que las familias vicentinas pues tienen un grande corazón. Gracias. Esta obra de la construcción de las 13 casas ha sido la primera experiencia que hemos tenido en México de colaboración de todas las ramas de la familia vicentina. Y ha sido una experiencia maravillosa porque nos hemos dado cuenta que uniendo esfuerzos se pueden lograr cosas 
verdaderamente trascendentes e importantes para mucha gente. A veces los necesitados nos dan tanto más de lo que nosotros les damos. Creemos que los estamos ayudando y lo que ellos nos dan nos llena de una manera que no, no tiene precio. Muchas gracias a la familia Vicentina, muchas gracias. 400 años, 400 años, 400 años y contando. Thank you. Um, all of the, this film and all of the materials that you would need to begin uh, a 13 Houses project, if you're interested, everybody leaving today will be given a memory stick with, with this film and with all of the materials. Uh, and it's in every language that's in the room as well for you to use. If Yasmin, Denise and Natalie could stand up, these are the three members of staff who will be at the door to hand these out and they'll also give you a contact card as well and if you are interested in following up one of us will 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 take your call okay so thank you for listening i think there's now some questions that sister mary is going to take us through Sister Carolyn Mark, uh, you have given us another example of the Vincentian idea of love inventive to infinity. Thank you. I would like you now to take out from your folders a paper that uh, is entitled Questions for Small Discussion Groups. They are also up here on the uh, screen if you uh, can't locate them uh, just now. Um, uh, we are going to have our first breakout session um, according to our language groups. Now, because of the time, we're not going to spend a lot of time doing it, but we want to have the opportunity for you to get together with others in your language group and look at um, especially questions two and three. What is the Vincentian family doing Vincentian to family help those who are homeless Vincentian in your area, if you know? And then what more could we do? And then what more And be inventive to infinity. And be inventive to... Now, we're going to break up into language groups, and for this we have the help of some of the members of the executive council who are going to lead you to where you need to be in order to uh, have your conversation. All right, so I would invite um, the members of the group, of the committee, who have the papers with the directions. <laughs> Lawrence, Ricardo, Brower, Maria, Teresa, and Barbara, D. Alicia and Francois, thank you. Now, um, the, P, uh, the uh, English speaking group, uh, you are not going to be neglected, but we're going to save you for the, uh, for the end, all right? Uh, would the, would the um, people who uh, are Chinese speaking please follow Lawrence? The Portuguese group, please, Ricardo. You can come up now as, you, as your uh, group is being called. The Dutch, Brouwer. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot to mention, um, as 
you are coming up, and I'm sorry about this. Uh, we will have 25 minutes in the group, and then please return here after 25 minutes. Right. Dee is going to be leading the Italian speaking group. Alicia, the Spanish. Here's and Francois the French. Maria Teresa and Barbara, right here, will be leading the German-speaking groups. Now the English speaking groups are going to be here in the auditorium and we have set up chairs in many different areas so that you can meet in groups of eight.